An animatic is a basic animation that shows the narrative, pacing and staging before you start on the final. In After Effects, we want to place a temporary voiceover file if we need a guide, then grab the storyboard frames and time them out, and watch it over and over again to refine the timing further. We might retime the audio if needed as well, and then add some basic animation to communicate the feel the final piece should have. We might add fade to blacks, crossfades, and more, until we have an animation that accurately depicts what the final work will be like. So, starting off, in my project folder, I have a script that's going to guide me. I have hand-drawn storyboard frames that I've just photographed on my phone. Plus, I have an extra image that I want to change. And in my assets folder, I have my temporary voiceover file. The first thing I need to do is jump into Photoshop and start a new file using the preset of the format that we need to work in. Once that's open, I'll also open a storyboard frame. So I'll go into my storyboard folder and I'll find the first frame. I'll use the rectangular marquee tool to select the part of the image that I want. I'll copy it with Command C and switch back to the new file to paste it with Command V. I'll have to zoom out a little and press Command T to scale it to the right size. I'll save the file in my Assets folder, with a scene number and a little description so I know what it is. I'll then start another new file and do the same thing to the second storyboard frame. I need to do this for all of the frames. For this particular frame, I still copy over the image, but I want to add in the new spaceship that I drew. So I'll open up that file and use the Polygon Selection tool to make a more irregular cutout before copying it over in the same way. Now I have all of my scenes as separate Photoshop files. But wait a minute, why do I number the scenes like this? Well, firstly, if we only number everything with a single digit until we need to use two digits, some older programs, when looking at these files, will order them according to the first digit they see. So it'll look like this. Likewise, if we want to add a new scene in between existing scenes, we might add a letter to its name. However, the A, just like if we named it 4.5, implies that this scene is a subset of scene 4, which is confusing, because it's not, it's a whole new scene. However, if we add a leading zero, and we count up in tens, then we can prevent both of these problems. Jumping over to After Effects now, I'll go to my project palette and click the New Composition button. I'll give it a name and choose the same preset I chose in Photoshop, and I'll double check the settings are all correct. I will need to change the duration though. I'll give myself 2 minutes, 0 seconds and 0 frames. Now, I'll bring in my voiceover by going to File, Import, File. I'll select it and click Import. And I'll see it appear in the project palette. I'll just grab it and drag it down to the dark area of my timeline. I'll then grab the end of the work area bar and I'll shorten it to only a little longer than the voiceover. In the composition menu, I'll choose Trim to Work Area to make that the new duration. I can now expand out the layer to see it's audio visualized or use the shortcut LL. Double clicking in the project palette is a shortcut to the import dialog. And now I'll bring in my Photoshop scenes. Shift select all of them and make sure that any sequence checkboxes are turned off. Now just drag them straight into the new folder button and keep all of your assets organized. Now I want to click on the last scene, then shift click on the first one to select them all and drag them into the timeline. I'll see that they've ordered with the earlier scenes down the bottom. That's because of how I selected them. Now I'll drag them off to the side and I'll deselect them by clicking any empty area in the timeline. And start positioning each scene to match the voiceover. 
I'll scrub the playhead and hit space to hear and watch the animation over and over until it feels right. Because the earlier scenes are lower in the layer stack, each later scene will cover up the scene before, so we don't have to worry about the ends at the moment. If I want to retime the audio, I can position the playhead where I want to and hit Command Shift D to split it. I can then reposition either half. If I need more time on the timeline, I can go to Composition, Composition Settings and change the duration to give me a bit more but I'll need to zoom out on the timeline to see the new length. To adjust the zoom, you can use the slider at the bottom, or you can adjust the handles above the timeline. You can pan the timeline this way too. I can also press N or B to change the work area and trim it like before. Once you're happy with the timeline, adjust the end of each layer bar so it shows each scene's length. In any timeline, I can move layers around, but I can also grab the front edge and trim it, or do the same to the back edge. However, if the layer is off the side of the timeline, I can't grab that edge. So instead, I position the playhead where I want to trim it to, and press Alt Right Square Bracket, or use the left square bracket to trim the start. I can also press Right Square Bracket on its own to move the whole layer to a line by its out point or left square bracket to align it by its in point. Now I want to fade in on the first scene, so I'll select it and hit T for the opacity property. I'll click the stopwatch to start keyframing, and change it to invisible at the start, then at a few seconds in, I'll change it to visible. The fade works, but the background isn't fading to black, so I'll go to Layer, New Solid, and create a black layer. and I'll move it under my scenes. I can do the same thing at the end to create a fade out. I'll set it to visible or 100% at the start and at the end of the scene I'll set it to zero. For a crossfade between two scenes, I'll apply similar opacity settings but I'll need to extend the bottom layer underneath the top layer. Don't forget to regularly save the project file while you work. Add a version number on the end to help you later. Because the first time you save your work, you can go to File, Save As, and give it a name. But next time you save, you can select Increment and Save. It'll save to a new file and add a version number automatically. The shortcut is Command-Alt-Shift-S. Watch the whole animation once you're done, and make sure all the timing feels right. The Earth followed them to the launch site, as if to say, Welcome home, and I told you so, both at the same time. Each disconnecting step was no longer a small victory against gravity, but a giant reminder for mankind. The ground offered no assistance, and there was no spring in their steps. Their existence felt no more tuned for this planet than it was deemed for any others. If all's good, we want to start adding detail, so let's jump back into Photoshop and open up one of the scene's Photoshop files. We'll select that Polygon Lasso tool again, and we'll cut out the foreground. In my case, I'll hold Shift and add to the selection. I'll then go to Layer, New Layer via Cut, and I'll see in my Layers palette that I have two layers now. Be sure to name them so we know what they are in After Effects. Back in After Effects, I can now right click on that layer and convert it to a layered comp. The layer bar stays the same, but the icon shows us that it's turned into a composition. 
and we see a folder of layers and a composition in the project palette. If we double click on that composition in the timeline, we get a whole new timeline with the layers that we made in Photoshop. But this timeline's too long. If I go back to the main timeline, I can press O to put the playhead at the out point of the selected layer. Now if I double click into that composition again, the playhead is in the same spot, and I can press N to just mark that visually. I'll then select my foreground layer and press S to show scale and start keyframing that property. Now the scale's animating, but I can see that there's holes left behind in the background layer. So I'll go back to Photoshop and I'll choose the magic wand tool to select those holes. Then I'll go to Edit, Fill, and make sure that Content Aware is selected. And now the holes are magically filled. I can then remove the selection, because I don't need it anymore. And in After Effects, everything looks good now. So then I'll open up the next scene and separate the foreground. And this time when I select the holes, I'll go to Select, Modify, and expand the selection by a few pixels. So there are no seams when I fill it. And I'll go through and do that to all of my other scenes. With this scene, the foreground's separate now and I can animate it, but the text behind hasn't really been filled in well. So I'll use the Type tool in After Effects and I'll create type layers so I can animate them directly there. For the second last scene, I want it to crossfade in slowly. So I'll grab the starting edge of that scene and I'll drag it over to the left. And I'll create the opacity changes that I need for the fade. Now I'll convert it to a layered comp. Uh, where's the start gone? The opacity keyframes stay there, but the start has actually shifted back to where the layer used to start. So I'll need to move the layer over and shift the keyframes. And now we're done. And we should watch our animation and make sure it's perfect. The Earth followed them to the launch site, as if to say, Welcome home, and I told you so, both at the same time. Each disconnecting step was no longer a small victory against gravity, but a giant reminder for mankind. The ground offered no assistance, and there was no spring in their steps. Their existence felt no more tuned for this planet than it was deemed for any others.